Hey guys, welcome back to Just Make It Daniel. And today we're gonna to be talking about PETG and how to get rid of blobbing. This is one of the biggest issues I've had so far over the 50 or 60 test prints that I've done. And I think I finally cracked it. You can see over here, I did this retraction tower, which I designed. They're about six millimeter posts and you can see there's absolutely no blobbing on there. Also no stringing at all. So I'll tell you in this video how I got rid of all of that with this one setting. But first off, let me take you through the story of all the different test prints that I did to get to the stage. Because if you don't know all the backstory, then this one trick might not work for you. So to start off, when I bought my printer initially, I wanted to print with different filaments, not just PLA. So I bought a clear roll of PETG just to try it out. And this was from RepRap. I'll have all the links of the different filaments that I bought and tried in the description down below. So with this clear filament, the first time I printed it, I tried a temperature tower. And I figured that this would allow me to figure out which temperatures worked the best and which ones didn't. And when I printed out this temperature tower, it looked like this on the screen. And that is not a pleasing print at all. Although you can't really tell because it's clear, there's a lot of blobbing on it, there's stringing, the part was extremely brittle, and the layer lines were crap. Basically the layer lines were separating, especially in the part that's on the overhang side. At some temperatures, the layers didn't even adhere and the whole thing ended up becoming a huge mess. So my first encounter with PETG, this was the worst filament I've ever printed with. I then proceeded to print out another eight temperature towers to see if I could change some settings and none of that really worked. It was still brittle, the layers were still coming apart, as well as the top wasn't very flat, and sometimes the print completely failed and I came back to a nozzle just extruding filament into thin air. The next thing I did was actually just observe what was happening on my printer. And I think this is kind of like watching paint dry, except as an engineer, it's a little bit fascinating because you can see what the print head's doing and the results it's producing, and you start to theorize why certain things are happening. For example, why is it sticking to the bed so well? Or why is there so much buildup on the nozzle? So I saw that there's a lot of buildup on the nozzle and it was sticking to the bed too well, and I figured maybe my bed leveling is a little bit off. So I changed up my bed leveling and realized that, yep, things were changing actually. And the reason I think is because the bed heating up to 80 degrees, this caused some expansion in the material. And when I was doing my bed leveling, this is at room temperature. So that's kind of a no brainer there. Why didn't I think of this earlier? And perhaps you've come across this problem as well. So if you're seeing that PETG is sticking too well to your bed, then consider leveling your bed at 80 degrees or 90 degrees. If you're too lazy to re-level your bed and you kind of want to just figure it on the fly, it's possible to do this as well. You can go into the menu screen in your settings while your print is happening and change the Z leveling. So there's a bunch of different settings you can change mid print and Z is one of them. And if you want to increase or lift the print head off the bed a bit more, change that Z number to a positive number. If you want to bring the head lower, change it to a negative number or a lower number. So this ultimately fixed my part from adhering to the bed way too well. On top of that, it actually prevented the part from becoming so brittle. And I think possibly why it was becoming so brittle is because PETG was being jammed into the bed and then the next layers were jammed on top of that and just way too much stress in the part. I'm not too sure if you guys actually have a more scientific explanation. I'd love to hear that down below why PETG is brittle. But at least that's the explanation I came up with for now. So the next step I noticed was that my parts were still very blobby and I was like, maybe I need to dry my filament. So I went downstairs, checked my oven and realized that it didn't go down to 65 degrees. The lowest it went down to was about 76. And some people online have said that PDG will fuse if you go at, if you set your oven temperature to around 75 or 80 degrees. So I didn't want to risk that. So drying the filament was kind of off the table here, but this filament was pretty much brand new. So I was like, why is a brand new roll of filament wet already? And right now inside my house, humidity is around 44%. So I kind of left drying my filament as a very last resort. The next thing that I did was order some different filaments. So I ordered some Polymaker filament, some Duramic filament. I have some Overture filament coming in as well as Hatchbox, which is supposed to be some of the best filament out there. The filament that I received next was actually one called Everyone or ERY1. 
Air One. I don't know what it's called. Anyways, this filament arrived by Amazon. I popped it in my printer and decided to print away in hoping that the results would be different. Well, that wasn't the case because the parts that came out with the black filament that was from Air One came out blobby as well. At this point, I was like, could it be that both these filaments, because they're relatively cheap on Amazon, they're both not dried properly? Maybe I just gotta wait for the other ones to come in. So I waited for the other ones to come in and I tried Duramic, it was terrible as well. Then I tried some white Polymaker, maybe the color made a difference and that didn't change it as well. So at this point I was like, it's definitely not the filament being dry or wet. And while I was trying these different filaments, I also tried different settings like temperature. I changed it from 215 all the way up to 260. That didn't work. I changed the extrusion ratio from 85% all the way to about 105% still got a lot of blobs. And when I did too low an extrusion ratio, then the layers ended up separating because there wasn't enough material being extruded. I also changed the bed temperature from 70 all the way to 90. That just made the parts stick a little better to the bed. I tried different print speeds. I went from 40 millimeters per second all the way up to 60 millimeters per second. I even tried 20 millimeters per second. That didn't change a thing at all. Still a lot of blobbing. And also I got a lot of stringing too. I tried disabling Z-Hop, that helped a little bit with stringing. The reason why Z-Hop helped with stringing is the fact that the nozzle is on the part. And if you enable Z-Hop, it will lift up a little bit and there's gonna be a bit of stringing and then it's gonna pull that string over to the next part where it's gonna print next. But if you disable Z-Hop, what happens is the extruder is on your part and when it's done extruding at that island, it's gonna wipe its nozzle actually along the part, along the perimeter, and then head over to the next island. So this actually helps wipe the nozzle a little bit. I tried to increase travel speed to 150 millimeters per second and thought that might help with blobbing to minimize the amount of time that the extruder is traveling from point A to point B. And in that time, there's always some back pressure that's still pushing some filament out and oozing. Other settings that I changed, I increased my retraction distance from two millimeters all the way to 12 millimeters. I increase the retraction speed anywhere from 20 millimeters per second all the way to 60 millimeters per second, still the same results. I tried no infill, I tried 80% infill, that didn't change a thing. I tried different perimeter overlaps like 10% or 30%. And in the end, when I was super fed up with PETG last night, I was like, maybe let's try a different software. I don't know where this idea occurred to me, but in the past, I've used Simplify 3D. And that software actually had a lot of different settings that aren't available on Flashprint. Perhaps there's different things I could do like put custom code during layer changes like turning the fan on or pausing or something like that. So I downloaded Simplify 3D and started my journey with this new slicer. In Simplify 3D, if you guys have downloaded it and tried it for the Adventure 4, you'll know that you can't actually select that as a printer. They don't have this printer profile yet. So I was like, great. Now I have to make my own printer profile. So I attempted a few things, did some hackery there and nothing really seemed right. When I exported the G code and dropped it into flash print, it showed me two of the exact same model. One of them was actually off the print bed and the other one was on the print bed and both were in red. So I thought there was some major error that's happening here. And I tried to actually dig into the G code, change the G code, reload it back in. And this is changing it manually through a text editor. So I reloaded it back in and still the same thing happened. There were two prints. Then I decided to port over the start code from a flash print file into the Simplify 3D G code file. And then there was only one print there. However, it was still offset off the bed. So I was like, this is really annoying. How do I change this? And then I realized that there are some FlashForge printers that are supported on Simplify 3D. Why don't I just create a printer based off of one of those printers and just change a few settings so that it would look like the Adventure 4. The type of G code that FlashForge uses is probably universal and this is an assumption on my part. So then I went ahead and decided to take the Adventure 3. Luckily enough, they have that on there. I modified the print bed settings. I set up a profile for PETG and exported it through the slicer into G code and dropped it into flash print. In voila, it worked like a charm. If you're interested in having Simplify 3D for your Adventure 4, then let me know in the comments down below and I might make a video later in the future. But now with Simplify 3D set up, I had some very basic settings that are pretty much mirrored from flash print onto Simplify 3D and I decided to print this. I had my finger over the power button just in case something went wrong because who knows, using an unsupported slicer right now is a little bit risky 
and you could risk frying your motors or the board. So if anything went wrong, I would just flick the power switch. Luckily nothing went wrong and my first print came out like this. And you might see sitting there thinking, how did he do that with just switching slicers? Well, there's actually one key setting in Simplify 3D that produced this result. And that is the setting and the speeds. So it's not actually one of the speed settings per se, but it's actually a setting that says if a layer is less than 15 seconds or X number of seconds, then you drop the speed for that layer to about 20%. It's used so that every single layer has at least a minimum set amount of time for that layer to be printed. And the next layer is not actually printed until that allotted time is up. And the purpose of this is to prevent the next layer to be printing on something like Jello because the previous layer has not yet dried. On top of that, if the previous layer has not yet dried, then it's possible that the print head could be lifting up the previous layer as well and just having the print totally delaminate. So it looks like dropping the print speed significantly, not 40 millimeters per second down to 30 millimeters per second, but like from 40 millimeters per second to about five millimeters per second is the trick. So again, I went back to flash print to see if this thesis proved out. Not quite. I think there's some secret sauce in Simplify 3D. It is a lot better though, if you can see this part over here, there's a lot less blobbing and the part actually stayed together versus this initial part over here. This one has a lot of blobs everywhere and it was also cracking as well. So if you guys are having problems with the Adventure 4 and Pet G and you're using flash print, drop your print speeds significantly. I think that other settings in Simplify 3D like coasting or wiping, these are also two other very powerful settings that will help prevent the last bit of blobbing that I saw on flash print. Unfortunately, flash print doesn't have that available. But if I continue to test with PETG and find the golden settings for it for the Adventure 4 using flash print, I'll let you guys know. But in the meantime, Simplify 3D is probably the slicer I'll be using going on from here on out. It has a cost to it at about 149 USD. However, it seems to be well worth it if you want to print with PETG. They also give you a two week guarantee. If you're not satisfied with it, you can get a refund. So if you really want to print PETG and you're seeing blobbing, try downloading Simplify 3D, test it out for two weeks, and honestly, you can just return the software after that if it works or not. It's up to you if you want to try it or not. If you guys are considering getting the Adventure 4, I know I said in the past there's a lot of issues with it, but having a 3D printer, buying it for about $1,000, it's relatively inexpensive when you compare it to the entire range of things. So for a printer that is in this price range, there's still gonna be a lot of fiddling around that you need to do in order to tweak settings and get the best print quality. I've got links in the description down below, whether you're in Canada or the US for purchasing this printer. It would really help my channel out if you bought through those links. I've also got links to the filaments that I used before. So if you wanna see the Polymaker Pet G that I use, I've got that link down below. And that's what I used to print this over here. It was a pretty good printer. I will be releasing more videos on Pet G and how to master it with your Adventure 4 or any other printer out there and what each setting does when you change it. I am currently having some inconsistency in my layers on a Benchy, so that's the next thing I'm trying to figure out. And I'll have that video on how I figure that out coming out as soon as I figure this out. That was a lot of figures there. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling on now. If you guys want to check out a couple more videos on the Adventure 4, I have them up on the screen here. And with that said, that's a wrap.